Two patterns that would be indicative of a ghost of competition past having existed would be either resource partitioning, that is the observation that the resource needs of a particular organism are different than, uh, than others that occupy the same uh, community, or character displacement. And character displacement is basically saying that there are features of the organism itself, biochemical, physical, morphological, that differ between two species, and those differences allow them to utilize the resources that are there in slightly different ways. And so you get resource partitioning, uh, often because you also get character uh, displacement. But these are two different manifestations. I've already talked about an example that uh, looks at uh, resource partitioning, uh, things that might look like this. If you look at uh, an individual plant and where organisms feed on that plant, some might be feeding on the roots, some might be leaving, feeding on the leaves as uh, leaf miners, some might be stem boring, others might be feeding inside of the, uh, of the seeds. These would all be examples of resource partitioning. Not all of them are feeding on the same thing. And the reason for that uh, is that if they were, they would be um, subject to competition. And one species would do better than the other one. At least there would be selection for one species to get better at better at utilizing that resource uh, so that it could persist in the face of the other species that are trying to do the same. Here's an example with uh, bark beetles. Um, bark beetles utilizing the same exact tree here. There are some that are specialized uh, to feeding on the uh, lower part of the bark. There are some that are specialized to feeding on the uh, tips of the branches, whereas others are kind of here in this mid uh, part of the canopy, and maybe they feed in, in slightly different ways. And these are examples, the spatial partitioning are examples of uh, ways in which competition may have shaped uh, the, um, the utilization of this shared uh, common resource. Some of this differentiation can even be seen at a much finer scale with uh, certain uh, aphid species uh, here, or actually these are leaf hopper species, some of them specializing to feed right along the midrib or on, along the leaf margins, whereas others, like these open circles here, are specialized to feed in the middle uh, of the leaf. Maybe there's a space consideration or maybe there's just slightly different nutrient uh, requirements uh, that these species have that allow them to persist in these um, slightly spatially differentiated uh, areas. And these are right next to, uh, to each other. Similarly, this is another example with uh, uh, leafhoppers. Uh, leafhoppers may be present at different times during the season. Uh, this is uh, you know, over the course of the summer from May until the fall here. Different species emerge either early or like this one here, emerge late and this temporal uh, displacement may be uh, something that allows these species to minimize the competition uh, between them. Now again, whether this actually is a consequence of competition or has to do with something completely different is really hard to test. But these are the kinds of uh, data that people would point to to say competition uh, is important in, uh, herbivor in herbivorous insect uh, communities. Another example uh, that you can point to to say that competition may have been occurring is uh, through character displacement, through evidence of character displacement. And this is basically when in a situation where two species that occupy the same place uh, geographically, um, you would expect that in the areas where they overlap the most, that physical attributes or biochemical attributes that they have would be slightly different in such a way that the, the way that they utilize resources in those areas um, would be slightly different. And this would minimize the types of interactions, that uh, negative interactions that they otherwise would be experiencing. And this is um, focusing on a specific characteristic of the organism, not just the resource use uh, more broadly. And again, um, you would expect the peak here of uh, the organisms to be further apart um, in places of sympatry, that is where they co-occur, than, um, than they might on their own. Here's an example of this 
phenomenon of character displacement that comes from these beautiful beetles here with these complex uh, horns, particularly in the males, that are used for uh, um, for fighting and jousting for females, actually. This is uh, a beetle that even Darwin recognized, and he has this uh, wonderful description saying, if you could just imagine one of these male calcosoma with this polished bronze coat here, and its vast complex horns magnified to the size of a horse or even a dog, it would be one of the most imposing animals in the world. Uh, it's wonderful to have that visual kind of shrinking yourself down to the size of one of these beetles and being confronted with it uh, eye to eye. Uh, beautiful uh, from here, but quite terrifying, I'm sure, if you were there in person. Uh, and uh, in the middle, there are some places where they actually occur in sympetry. Both species can be found uh, at the same time, and there's some others uh, out here. What they did is they actually measured the size of the body because this is proportional to the size of the uh, big antlers that they have and uh, presumably also um, gives them uh, uh, gives them advantage over, over females and over other males that are just present uh, on the substrates. And what you can see here for these two different species, Caucasus and uh, Atlas, that uh, when they occur in allopatry, for example, Caucasus, the, the darker one, um, in uh, these parts here of Java, um, and uh, Atlas over here in these parts of, uh, of Sumatra and in the, the Philippines uh, here, when they occur in sympatry, they're much more similar in size than when they occur in, I'm sorry, when they occur in allopatry, they're much more similar in size than when they occur in sympatry, where Caucasus becomes, uh, it tends to be larger and Atlas tends to be smaller uh, in these uh, areas. Here you can see that body length is uh, related to the horn length here. And again, you can see that this, these allometric uh, differences, the bigger you are, the bigger the horn you have, are true for both species. When they're in sympetry, they're very similar. And uh, uh, the when they're in sympetry, they're very similar. And when they're in allopatry here, they're actually quite differentiated uh, with the Caucasus being much bigger than the uh, Atlas. And this is roughly what it looks like um, if you were to take a representative uh, beetle when they occur in sympetry compared to where they occur in allopatry. Uh, Caucasus getting bigger, relatively speaking, and Atlas actually becoming relatively smaller. Similar types of relationships uh, have been seen with other groups, including ants. Uh, here, uh, along the x-axis, in this study uh, by uh, Davidson, uh, she found that the more different kinds of ants, as diversity of seed-feeding ants goes up, what you tended to find is that the mandible width tended to become more, uh, have a narrower range, be less uh, diverse within a species, similar to the pattern that you saw with the, with the atlas. And mandible length here is relevant for these species as a character because this is uh, what determines what kinds of seeds they can actually grab and bring back uh, to the nest. So what you actually find is that when there's more species, the range of mandible widths tends to be narrower, perhaps an indication of character displacement as they specialize on a certain subset of seeds, therefore displacing the likelihood that they're actually um, uh, that they're actually uh, competing for the same resource. They get better at handling smaller seeds, for example. So these are all examples of uh, the consequences that one might expect if competition was actually playing an important role in, um, in natural communities. Character displacement and uh, differentiation in resource use, uh, niche uh, differentiation. Now, of course, these are just patterns that we're observing in nature and really misses the important question of, is this actually a cause and effect relationship? Which is uh, kind of uh, dogged uh, studies of competition uh, since, the, since the origins of this particular field. Now, what happened after about the 1970s is that this field uh, made a phase shift. It became much more experimental 
and researchers actually started to investigate much more rigorously whether uh, the mechanisms of competition, that is uh, reduction in fitness, uh, actually are playing out. And what, the, what, what are the features that uh, cause certain species to be more or less successful in the presence of others that, uh, um, with whom they share a potential uh, resource. And here you can see the uh, mandible size distribution here for one particular species, uh, Verimesser, uh, when it's in the presence of a different species here. And uh, here you can see kind of the character displacement where the average and the variation of the mandible size is significantly uh, different and skewed from that of the local uh, potential competitor uh, seed feeder here. So in each time the local um, one of the other species has a very different mean distribution than the one um, that is uh, depicted uh, here. Again, evidence of character displacement.